Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant, and for today's video, we are going to be repotting a really big plant. It is this giant golden pothos that I have next to me, which I got a little over a year ago now. So just to give you a sense of scale, I have this other golden pothos here that is like a much more normal size. I'm just gonna set it down next to the giant golden pothos so that you can see what a really big plant it is. When I first got it, it was about like this tall. So there's actually a, a styrofoam pole in there that you can't see from this angle, but I can show you in some B-roll. But it wasn't even to the top of the pole yet when I first got it, but it did have really big leaves and it continued to grow huge leaves until it outgrew its stake and then started to kind of trail over and the leaves started to grow really small again. What I've noticed is what it takes for this plant to grow huge is to actually be able to climb up something. So Epipremnum, which is the genus name of this species, when you break down that word Epipremnum, it means growing on a tree. So it is a plant that wants to grow up, um, and I found that that is definitely what keeps the size of the leaves large. One of the really cool things about this plant, besides it being giant, was the fact that actually some of the leaves have fenestrations. So I can show you, they've got these like little holes that normally don't develop unless this plant is growing outside or in really bright conditions. So it is some of the smaller leaves on the plant that have the holes, not the really big ones. So I'm still not completely sure what the deal is with those leaves. This variety of golden pothos is considered the giant Hawaiian pothos. It was sold to me as just a giant pothos, but I am under the impression that the ones that are giant like this were Hawaiian pothos. People do also say that any pothos if given adequate light and the right conditions will grow to this size, so I'm not completely sure on that. There isn't a lot of clarification on whether or not this Hawaiian variety is different, and I still haven't been able to find the official patent documents for it. Did you find the patent documents for this pothos? No. Yeah, so I have, we haven't been able to locate the documents that were the patent for this giant Hawaiian pothos. There's just like people who say that it was patented. So again, I'm not completely sure what the deal is on the status of what this actual plant is. It is definitely an Epipernum aureum, which is the name for golden pothos. I have never repotted it and it has gotten really, really top heavy. Some of the vines have gotten really long and I kind of think that it's just, it's time for a repot. It's in just a tiny little 10 inch pot right now. I noticed that some roots have started to grow out of the bottom of the pot and that it also needs water like all the time, which to me is an indicator that the roots have grown into a really dense ball in there and there isn't that much soil left to hold extra moisture. So the plant is really thirsty and it's just like always needing a lot of water. So all of that together is a sign to me that it's pretty much time to repot this plant. Okay, so let's talk about the repotting. So I've been putting off this repotting for months and months because it's a really big plant and I don't know what to do with it. And I originally was going to take all of the vines off of the stake that it's on. And I was gonna try to re-stake them onto a bigger structure. But at this point, the vines have grown so long. I just don't think that there's any point in trying to actually contain the beast and try to stake it. So what I'm doing is I'm basically gonna just let it have this room. <laughs> So I actually, I really wanted to redo this room and make it look nice before doing this video, but I figured I just kept putting it off because I like need to think about the furniture and all that. So I decided to just go ahead with the repotting. So I'm sorry that this room is a mess and I'm excited to eventually show you a new version of this room in which this plant dominates it. Okay, so for this particular repotting, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just repot it in place. Okay, I'm gonna just have my husband help me pick up the pot. I'm gonna pull the nursery pot off and stick a new pot underneath it and not disturb the root system at all. And we're just gonna do it all in one go because this plant is really huge. It's, it would topple over if I didn't have it supported. So I've got it on this bookcase over here. Just turn this to show you. It's some of the vines are like going to the ground and coming back up and they're growing all over this shelf or they're being supported by it in a pretty serious way. And so if I removed the shelf support, this whole plant would definitely just topple over because there's a couple of really big vines. So we're going to just try to repot it in place because I didn't really think that it was feasible to try to move this plant into the other room where I normally like to film. So we're just going to kind of, <laughs> we're going to just do this here. I actually live like this. So we're going to, we're going to just do this. I can show you this room too. I've got behind me a mirror there to try to reflect back the light because that's the only window in the room is in front of me there. And then I've got a little 
really crappy, ugly shoe rack. This is like where I put all of my shame plants. This is my room of shame. I've got this like broken light fixture that I like whatever I just ignore. Um, and I've got pretty much like a bunch of like rare plants in here that I secretly kind of hate because they just bring me a lot of anxiety. So I kind of just keep them in this room and this is this is where we are. So my goal is by repotting this plant, I'm hoping that it's gonna be kind of like a catalyst for me to try to clean up this room and make it a little bit nicer because right now it is what it is. I'm a little bit ashamed, but I'm showing you anyway. So we're gonna just do it. I'm gonna call my husband in here and we are going to start this repotting. So I bought this, I bought this really heavy, nice ceramic pot um, like forever ago with the intent of repotting this pothos in here. It has a tiny little drainage hole, but I think that should be sufficient. And it has like a matching little tray, which we'll see when we start the repot. So let's get to it. Say hi to my husband. I'm gonna have him just grab the plant by the totem. And I think, okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna take a look at, oh, you can see me down here too. Okay, this is a really good angle actually for this. So I'm gonna put this pot next to this one to see how much taller it needs to sit. Well, this is kind of a bad angle for this actually, but basically I need to put a little bit of dirt in this pot before I can put the next plant in just so that it is the right height. I'm gonna just use this pot. Okay, so I dumped in some soil. I'm gonna put in some perlite. And then I'm also putting in some charcoal because for a big pot like this that doesn't have great drainage, um, charcoal really helps prevent any kind of like bacterial things growing down at the bottom of the pot. So I usually like to put a bunch of charcoal in the bottom. All right, so I think that's like a good amount, right? You'll go on that side and I'll go on this side. And you're gonna just lift it. Where's a good place to grab it? I'm just gonna just grab kind of on the vine. Okay. okay, we're gonna just do it. It's like ripping off a band-aid. My husband's gonna pick it up. I'm gonna pull off the nursery pot and we're gonna plop it back down in here. You ready? Yep. Okay, you can move slowly. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, it's stuck to the tray. Oh, the roots are really on there. Okay, wait, false alarm, put it back down. Okay. It's really stuck inside the pot and normally when I repot, I like squish on the pot a bunch, but I didn't do that because for some reason I always fool myself into thinking repotting would be really easy, but it always is a challenge. So now I have to try to squish this pot. I can squish right Oh my God, there's no way this is coming out of here. I think I have to use my legs. This is what I'm doing. Oh my God, my hips are cracking. Ah! How am I gonna get this out? Want me to try squeezing it? I think I might need a- Knife? Um, my favorite tools for helping with repotting are like the art paint mixers. Just cause I happen to have a lot of them. Oh, this is never gonna come out of here. What was I thinking? You just need to cut the pot. Okay, should we try again real quick? Yep. Pretty hard. Can you lift it higher? All right. And now, get this part in there. You see these big roots? Okay. And now, touch down. Woo! Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. My husband suggests that we add some more dirt, which I agree with. <laughs> I realized I forgot to be mixing in perlite, so I'm gonna just dump some in there. This is perlite, by the way. It helps with aeration. It makes sure the soil doesn't get too compacted. It also helps with drainage. Okay, so we are fully repotted. The new pot I think looks great. And the main thing is that this plant isn't going to fall over and it's got plenty of room to grow. So I'm really excited that I finally was able to repot this plant. It has been on my list of to-dos for months and months. So I feel really good that I was able to do it with my husband's help and that I was able to show you. This has been a really fun repotting. I did run into a little hitch where I wasn't able to get the plant out of the nursery pot. So keep that in mind when you do your big repotting. I guess it seems obvious, but for some reason it didn't occur to me to try to loosen the plant. So when you do your repotting, just try to loosen it up a little bit and that should really help ease the transition out of the nursery pot. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to my channel. If you already subscribed, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I would love to hear from you if you have a giant golden pothos or if you know what the actual distinction is or if this is technically a different plant or not. I would love to have a discussion with you about what you found and I would love to see your pictures or share your videos with me, repotting your giant golden pothos. I would love to watch them. So thank you again so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye. I also just wanted to point out some of the damage on these leaves. So these spots here and this yellowing around the edges is a combination of being slightly underwatered sometimes, that's the yellowing edges. And then these little brown spots, which do look a lot like bacterial damage, is actually sun damage. Um, and I know that because it's only on this side of the plant, which faces my south window, and it gets a lot of direct sun, so I know that those little spots are kind of just like superficial damage. It looks at first like it could be some kind of pest, um, but I have inspected this plant thoroughly and it's not. So I just wanted to show you um, what sun damage looks like on a pothos in case you've been experiencing that ever um, by putting a pothos directly in a bright window or something you might get spots that look a little bit like, like this on your leaves um, and that isn't really anything to worry about unless you notice that they start to get mushy or very very suspect looking because sometimes when you do have um, a sunburn it can create a space for additional bacterial infection to set in but when I look at this I don't really see a problem.